Savior of lunatic mode and deliverer of epic one-liners, Frederick is basically the Jigen or Jagen of this game. For those of you who don't know what that is, a Jagen is a character who's usually a mounted class who starts off promoted and joins at the beginning of the game. They're much stronger than most other characters at that point and exist as a sort of a crutch to help newer players get through the earlier levels of the game while their characters are still weak. However, generally these characters don't have very good growth rates and tend to get worse and worse over time, to the point where if you rely on them exclusively, you're really going to suffer in the long run. But you probably just looked at Frederick's growth rates. Yep, Frederick doesn't fall into that problem at all. He's actually really, really good. I still wouldn't recommend having him fight too much early on in the game though, because the fact that he starts out in the promoted class means that he'll gain far less experience points than other characters will, and he doesn't need experience nearly as much as they do. If you're gonna level him up, and Frederick will actually end up pretty good. He's got great growths, as you can see, especially in HP. Now that HP growth is actually 40 points lower on this chart than it normally is, so it's over 100, which means yeah, how over 100 growth rates work. Basically, if a growth is over 100, it means that the character is guaranteed to gain 1 point to that stat when leveling up, and the leftover percent above 100 is their chance of gaining plus 2. So Frederick here has 110 in HP, which means that he'll always get plus 1 and has a 10% chance of getting plus 2. He also has an excellent strength growth, and a very decent growth in defense, and alright growths in skill, and actually surprisingly speed too. As someone who's more of an armored um, mounted unit, because in a rarity among Jigen characters, Frederick is actually a great knight, not a paladin. That's kind of a hybrid of an armored class and a paladin, so it has a bit less movement than paladins do, but it makes up for that with better defense. However, there is a problem with the Great Knight class though, being a combination of an armoured and a mounted class, it is in fact weak to both anti-armour and anti-cavalry weapons, so watch out for that. That can really trip you up, and trust me, the game knows this and will exploit it for all it's worth on lunatic mode. Stay away from those enemies with hammers, they are specifically there to deter you from using Frederick too much. Not that that's going to stop you. Frederick's cap modifiers are very good too. Plus two strength, plus two skill, and plus two defense is pretty much perfect for his purposes. And minus two magic is pretty much completely pointless, seeing as he doesn't really have much use for magic. He has no magic using classes as his options, and really you don't want to have him use any magical weapons anyway. The only thing the minus two magic really does is means he's not really that good of a father to mage-based children, but that's really the only thing it affects. Minus two speed, though, is a bit of an issue. It helps emphasize that Frederick is more of a tank than an actual speedster, but the fact that his speed growth is actually not that bad makes that minus two speed cap kind of annoying. Frederick's base growths are actually pretty decent all round, and it's pretty much only his class that means that he has uh, these kind of specialties towards strength and defense. But his resistance is a little low, like most armored classes, but he doesn't have a negative modifier in it, so at least he's somewhat good at tanking. The main downfall of Frederick, though, is his base stats. They may be good for early on in the game, but those bases are very, very bad for a level 1 promoted character. You'll see why that's the case when we start meeting more pre-promotes. Let me just say though, pre-promotes in this game are in general very, very good, and Frederick is no exception, but his bases are very bad compared to other pre-promotes in this game. So if you want to use Frederick, you will have to grind him in skirmishes or in DLC before he actually starts putting in real work for you later in the game. I mean, early in the game, he's amazing, but yeah, if you want to use him later on, again, you want to grind him in skirmishes or DLC. Don't let him steal too much experience during the main story, or you might regret it. One downside of Frederick though, his luck growth of 40 is actually quite low by this game's standards, so bear that in mind. One more thing that I want to note about Frederick. I said before that Frederick's usefulness really kind of depends on what mode you're playing. If you're playing lunatic mode, this guy is pretty much essential to even surviving the early chapters. 
you really, really need this guy. And as long as you keep him away from hammers or that one jerk guy in Lunatic Plus who can sometimes get the Lunar Plus skill in a hammer, and Hawkeye. If that happens, Frederick is guaranteed to die to him, and well, if Frederick dies to that guy, there's no chance of anyone else surviving, so you're basically screwed, and that's why Lunatic Plus is really annoying, because it's completely cheap and luck-based, but anyway... Yeah, don't worry too much about overusing Frederick on Lunatic Mode. You have to. Trust me. On Lunatic Mode, you generally want to give Frederick the Avatar's Bronze Sword as soon as you're able, so that Frederick is actually able to get Weapon Triangle advantage against the multitude of Axe users you'll be seeing early on in the game. That and you don't want to waste the Silver Lance too much early on, because that's a very, very powerful weapon and is pretty much overkill for that point. Now on to skills and class options, and Frederick is interesting here being a pre-promote, so he actually starts out as a Great Knight, which is that one class in the middle there. If you want, you can actually demote him to Cavalier with a second seal if you want, and that's something that I didn't mention earlier. Another reason why pre-promotes in this game are much better than in earlier games, you can effectively level infinitely in this game regardless of, act of whether you start promoted or not. In previous games, pre-promotes suffered from the fact that they really only had 20 levels, whereas everyone else effectively got 40 levels. But here, since you can demote and reclass as much as you want and reset your level, you can basically level up infinitely, so those disadvantages no longer apply. But there is kind of little reason to demote Frederick to a Cavalier, since he already starts with both skills from that class, Discipline and Outdoor Fighter. Since most of the early game maps are outdoors, Frederick is going to be pretty useful with that outdoor fighter skill, and Discipline is not bad to have considering that he can use three types of weapons from the start, swords, lances, and axes, but his lance proficiency is already pretty high, it's a, actually one off max, but his swords and axe ranks might need a little bit of increasing. As a great knight, at level 5 Frederick will learn Luna, which is always a useful skill, it's the only real activation skill that Frederick gets, so might as well take it. But I mean, Frederick's strength is pretty high as it is, but doing more damage is certainly appreciated. And Jewel Guard Plus, which definitely helps with Frederick's very high defense, meaning that he already has a pretty high natural Jewel Guard rate, especially to those that he's supported with. He can also support with quite a few valuable characters who need protecting, so that certainly helps. If you reclass him to Paladin, Frederick can pick up Defender, which again helps with protecting characters when uh, doubled up with them, and Aegis, and this is really useful mainly because of another class branch that Frederick has access to, because he can also be demoted to Knight, or well, I prefer to call it Armor Knight to differentiate it from the Mounted Knights, because it gets a little confusing sometimes. This class is kind of a bit weird for him because it will deprive him of a mount and it will make him move very, very slowly, but he does benefit from the class due to the high strength and defense that he naturally has. The main hilarious thing about this class is it lets him pick up Indoor Fighter, so he can have both Indoor and Outdoor Fighter and get the boost from that skill regardless of where you're fighting, so that can be sort of useful, but it will take up two skill slots. But I guess you can uh, unequip the one that, if you know in advance what chap's going to be like, you can unequip the one that you don't need. The main reason though why this class branch is so useful though for Frederick is general, and it's not Rally Defense because... Again, like I said, rally skills are better if you have more of them, and Frederick only gets one, so it's not really all that useful. The main one here is Pavise, I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, basically, I'll just call it Great Shield, because that's what it was called in earlier games. Basically, it's like the opposite of Aegis, it halves the damage from swords, lances, and axes when it activates. And combined with Aegis, yes, you can have both those skills equipped at once. That's basically a chance of halving damage from anything, and that is very, very useful, especially for someone as defensively oriented as Frederick, so picking up both those skills for him is definitely worthwhile. His third class branch is the Wyvern Rider branch, which is sort of interesting. It gives him access to a flying mount, which means he'll be able to cover more ground and won't be impeded by terrain. And something else to note, that as a Wyvern Rider, Frederick's strength stat shoots through the roof. His growth goes up to 70, which is actually one of the highest in the game, so definitely a very good class to go if you're offensively inclined. The skills that you gain from Wyvern Rider aren't really all that fantastic. I mean, 
Quick Burn is alright, it's certainly better than Slow Burn, but I'm not really that big a fan of it. The main things I like about this class tree are Sword Breaker and Lance Breaker, two of the Breaker skills which Frederick can probably make some good use of, and again could help him out defensively, with normally his evasion isn't all that good, but this will give him plus 50 evasion against Swords or Lances, which helps him tank even more effectively, so like I said, Frederick's skills are definitely very defensively inclined. He can also get Deliverer from the Griffin Knight class, which will combine well with Jewel Guard Plus and with Defender, giving him a movement boost when paired up with another character. So yeah, put all, those, all three of those skills on him, and he'll definitely be very effective when paired up with other characters. In short, Frederick's skills basically lean towards helping him do what he does best, defending. And now voice actor trivia. Frederick is voiced by Kyle Herberts, who has played, among other things, Ryu in Street Fighter 4 and most of his other appearances since then, Miles Edgeworth in Ace Attorney Jewel Destinies, and Professor Oak in Pokemon Origins. But interestingly, Frederick is not the only character Kyle Herbert voices in this game. In fact, we've actually seen the other one he voices before. Wanna know who it is? Validar. Yeah, that's right. The one who voices Frederick also voices this guy. Go back and listen to those cutscenes in the Premonition again, and it's actually kind of mind-blowing how different he sounds.